on July 23rd, 2012. This is Polling You number 79, day five, with a teaser for our lesson on strong jump shifts by opener or the responder. And welcome, this is Michael here at Bridge Hands. We're going to continue our saga using suit quality, self sustaining suits, losing trick count, and cover cards. Once again, we will be incorporating these advanced methods to bid game as well as to explore slam and even Grand Slam contracts. And as always, here at Bridge Hands, you can count on us to provide you with lots of opportunities to bid and play Bridge Hands. Oh, by the way, we are providing this preview for those of you who have not signed up for a free premium or ultra membership. If you already are a Bridge Hands subscriber, then please go on over and log in at www.bridgehands.com. Over on our Pulling You number 79 episode, you will find several hours of video lessons with over a dozen hands to bit them up big time. After all, in our recent combo lesson, number 77 and 78, we were dealt hand after hand with weak preemptive bids. So it's only fair that we have some fun bidding strong hands, right? Well, okay, let's take a peek at a few portions of our lesson and a few strong hands where you may have the opportunity to make a strong jump shift call. So grab a seat, get comfortable, and off we go. It's showtime, folks. Now, counting distributional points with a semi-self-sustaining suit, the hand should weigh in around 19 to 21 points. Of course, using losing trick count, we would prefer to count the hand as four or five losing trick count upon finding our semi-self-sustaining suit. Secondly, to make a strong jump shift, our partner must first have shown some semblance of life bidding a new suit or a no trump. Third, as opener, we must have an imbalanced hand shape. In the event we held a strong balanced hand, we should either open some level of no trump or make a jump rebid in no trump to no trump with 18 or so, or maybe a bad 19 high card points, or maybe th three no trump with a great 18 or that 19 point hand. In other words, our strong jump shift suggests shortness in one or two suits. Fourth, since opener strong jump shift is game forcing, even when responder may only have six high card points, or maybe a bad five, Opener ought to have four or five losers. After all, if opener held a good four losing trick count hand or less, we would expect a strong two club opening bid. And fifth, as we will soon see, when making a strong jump shift, opener's rebid is at least the three level and it's made in a suit rank that is lower than the opener's first suit, such as one spade, and a rebid of three clubs, or even opening one diamond and rebidding three clubs. Incidentally, openers rebid in a new suit, not the suit bid by responder. Later, we will discuss one exception where openers two level jump reverse is also considered a strong jump shift. Now here's a situation, opener begins in a minor then enter one heart response. If opener were to rebid one heart or one spade, then responder could pass with six high card points. So here the opener must jump to two hearts or two spades to show that 19 to 21 point strong jump shift with four or five cover cards and game forcing values. Well, okay, let's take a look at some strong jump shift examples. First off, opening one heart by the opener. So far showing anywhere from 12 all the way up to 21 points and five or more hearts. Responder bids one spade with four or more spades and six or more points. Could be ace-jack five times or maybe king-queen five times. Still be worth opening. If opener now were to rebid two clubs that would show 12 to 18 points. And responder could pass with a minimal hand. So with 19 to 21 points and at least a semi-self-sustaining suit, opener should do a jump to the three level, three clubs here. 
Okay, on our second hand, opener again bids one of the major suit, one spade this time, and responder is bidding one no trump. Mind you, the responder might have a void in spades with a long minor suit, but with less than 10 points, the responder is forced to make the least evil bid, and hopefully without making faces or unnatural gestures. At any rate, opener's three-level rebid is again game forcing showing four to five losers and 19 to 21 playing points and most likely the pair are headed for a three no trump contract in this situation with 25 or more points well on our third hand we have an example of a somewhat rare two level strong jump shift the opener begins bidding one diamond the responder one heart and the opener jumps to two spades with 19 to 21 playing points. A two-suited hand with lots of cards in the two pointed suits. Five or more diamonds and four or more spades. Always more in the first bid suit. Recall that if opener rebid one spade, the reponders might pass with six or seven bad high card points or maybe five high card points in those rounded suits, clubs and hearts. So as opener with four to five losing trick count, and game going values, we should jump to two spades, a higher ranking suit than our first bid suit, and at the two level. Notice that in both of the above scenarios, we needed to jump to the three level in a lower ranking suit. So the rule for strong jump shift is three level in a lower ranking suit, two level in a higher ranking suit. Okay, while we won't get into reverse bids in this lesson, until we get to number 70. For now, let's leave it that opener is the first to break the two level barrier and bids in a higher ranking suit than the opener's first bid suit, yet not above the suit rank of the responder's first bid. So this so-called reverse bid by opener shows 17 to 21 points and may or may not show that coveted semi-self-sustaining suit. Okay, let's try some examples. Opener, one diamond. Responder, one spade. Opener rebids two heart. Notice that the opener broke the two-level barrier and made a two-level bid in a higher ranking suit than their own first bid. In this situation, the responder cannot support either of the opener's bid suits at the two-level. So responder is stuck having to either rebid to no trump or goodness knows whose three level suit they want to play in. And to play in either a two no trump or a three level suit contract, the partner needs to have about 23 points or more. And hopefully not a misfit when playing in a three level contract. Thus, if the responder holds only six high card points, then the openers reversed should certainly show 17 points or more. Now in the second example, it goes one club, one heart, two diamonds. Notice how the opener is breaking the two level in a higher ranking suit than the opener, but not the responders, which would be right, the strong jump shift. Ditto on the third, one diamond, one no trump, two hearts. It's a strong jump shift where one diamond, one no trump, three clubs would indeed be a strong jump shift. Additionally, as we'll see in part three of the lesson, the responder can also make a strong jump shift call by immediately making a skip bid. In case the responder has already opened, the responder jump shows a very strong interest in bidding slam, going well beyond game values. One diamond, two hearts by the responder. One heart, two spades by the responder. One spade, three hearts by the responder. Okay, regarding the bridge ecosystem, now let's do a few math exercises to figure partner's average values when we are dealt a big hand. When we are holding 17 points, we can subtract that number from 40, the total points in the deck, to estimate partner's possible points. So 40 take away 17 equals 23 points. Thus, with three remaining players around the table for those points, three goes into 23 almost eight times, meaning on average, partner will hold almost eight high card points. Incidentally, as we will see in that lesson number 80, 
we should have around 17 points or more to make that reverse call. Okay, holding 19 points, 40 minus 19 equals 21. So 3 goes into 21 seven times. So on average, when we hold 19 points, we have a slightly better than even chance our partner will make a bid, in which case we can force game by making a strong jump shift rebid. Or if we had a balanced hand, we could bid three no trumps on our rebid. Or maybe even four of our major suit with a great suit, semi self sustaining or better. Or as we'll discuss in our next lesson, we might possibly make a reverse bid. Well, of course, with 22 points or more, we are really itching to find game. And 40 minus 22 equals 18, less if we have more than 22 high card points. Assuming we hold 22, 40 minus 22 equals 18 remaining. With three of the remaining players going into 18, the average result per player is six times. So most of the time, when we open a strong two-club bid, we are optimistic game should be in hand most of the time, since a good partner ought to hold their fair share of remaining high card points, right? Yet even if partner only holds no more than three high card points, bidding game should be on with 22 plus 3, unless the pair have a very poor suit fit. And to reinforce the basics, openers should have a semi-self-sustaining suit with a count of nine or more before making a strong jump shift. And accompanying the semi-self-sustaining suit, openers' assets should total four to five losing trick count with an imbalanced hand. On a first hand, opener makes a one spade initial bid followed by a three heart strong jump shift. Notice that this time opener does not quite have a semi-self-sustaining suit in spades, yet everything else is working and the opener does hold 18 high card points plus extras for that fifth spade and a double finesse opportunity in hearts. That's provided, of course, we can get to the dummy two times. Well, even with no more than a 5-2 fit in spades, with three very good spade honors, the hand should equate to five losers. So the bidding might go one spade, one no trump, rebidding, three hearts, strong jump shift, which is forcing, responder, four hearts. Now it would be a shame if opener only rebid two hearts and responder pass, which they would with seven high card points. With both hands working well, especially responders to cover cards, making four hearts has very good odds. On our first hand, South is dealer, and look at the shape we have here. It's a 5-4-3-1. A um, lot of honors, too, in spades. Ace, King, Jack, Nine. That's useful. Five times. There's eight high, and certainly worth one for distribution points. That gives us nine. In hearts, Ace, Queen, Jack, and a connected ten. That ten is certainly worth something. There is another seven, plus nine is sixteen. In diamonds, working honors. King, queen, three times, there's another five, 21. A singleton club, no, don't count shortness. Remember, we count length as the declare, and we've already done that. So, do you want to open it one spade or two clubs? Remember the days of quick tricks where we used to count our ability to quickly get tricks, and if we had five or maybe a good four and a half, we might open two clubs? And we have that here. We have two honors in spades, the ace, king, top honors, that's two quick tricks. In hearts, ace, queen, there's another one and a half quick tricks. That brings us up to three and a half. And the king, queen of diamonds is worth one quick trick. It is four and a half, so it's right on the cusp. Well, if we were going to count losing trick count, where would we be? We would have one loser in hearts, one loser in spades, one loser in diamonds, and one loser in clubs. We would have four. And yes, if we can get one trick from our partner, if they have trump support, we're in good shape. If we had that 10 of spades, I would do it. It's close. Those of you on open two clubs, good on you. I'm gonna go one spade, bid just a little conservatively. Okay, over to the west hand. 
Here's another 5, 4, 3, 1 shape. 5 small diamonds. Queen, 10, 4 times in spades. Hmm. Defender likes the fact that they have Queen, 10, 4 behind a spade bid. Queen, Jack, 3rd of clubs. Working honors. Could be of some support. Singleton heart. No bid. Over the north hand, there is a 5, 4, 2, 2. Clubs. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five of them. They're running, but they're small. No, don't count a distribution point. In diamonds, ace, jack, doubleton. Could be five. We'll come back to that. In hearts, king four times. There's three. Plus perhaps five. Brings eight. And two small spades in partner suit. Tough situation. So it's going to be a one no trump response. Over in the east hand, there's a 4432. That's the flattest of them all. There's an honest bidder. And it is a ace king four times in clubs, four small hearts, two small spades, and ten, nine, eight of diamonds. No bid. Back to south, well, you don't want to bid two hearts because that would show up to 18 points. Your partner north could pass. So we need to make a jump rebid, not to two no trump. We do not have a balanced hand. Instead, to three hearts. Open one spade, one no trump response, three hearts by the rebid. Game forcing, and it certainly describes the 5-4 shape that we have in the majors. Um, a pass by West, they say it figures, I only have a singleton heart. Now North is getting excited, they have four hearts to the king. So they might want to count a shortage point for the ace-jack doubleton. But here again, if you want to count the ace-jack, ace-jacks are hardly worth five. Ace-jack third, yes, but ace-jack tights, there's not a lot you can work with. It's just an ace and just a jack. you got to play one or the other, and that's it. Well, at any rate, this north gets excited. Uh, they're going to bid for no trump. And if you, those of you who wanted to open two clubs, I'll bet those norths will definitely bid for no trump to ask for aces. Okay, a pass by east who's optimistic. We're having ace, king of clubs, and four hearts. To south, they're going to show two aces, the third step. Club Simon's hearts, they'll respond, rebidding five hearts for those two aces. Back to north, okay, you have one ace and the king of hearts. Do you want to go to slam? I think you'd be bidding a little aggressively there since your partner south opened, at least in my case, opening one spade. They're not going to have three loser hand or they would have opened two clubs. They're going to have, at best, a four loser hand. Could be a five loser hand. So if you've only got two or maybe two and a half cover cards. No, you don't have enough to ask for aces. Um, should be playing in four hearts, I believe. But at any rate, they're not going to go to slam, I hope, with only basically eight points. Don't count that jack of diamonds and also count for doubleton. Okay, so five hearts it is. They pass out. The opening lead is by West. Please, West, do not lead a singleton. Singleton leads are almost always bad. Your partner might have four. They might have four to the jack. You finesse them. They might have three to the queen. You finesse them again, even if the north-south have a nine-card suit. Don't lead your singletons. It's about as bad as leading an ace or unprotected ace or underleading an ace. Spades, no good there either. You've got the queen ten four times. And you know that south bid the suit. And that they've got a monster of a hand. They did a strong jump shift. So that leaves clubs or diamonds. Clubs probably isn't a bad with queen jack five. Um, if you had queen jack nine, top of a sequence, or for sure queen jack ten, I would lead it. I think I would just go with the safe lead of a top diamond, and that's what they do. A top diamond might as well just play a jack from the north hand from ace jack, and that will win the trick. Okay, let's go ahead and start pulling some trump and see where we're at here. We'll play a trump to our 10 is enough. That's all we need. Oops. Look what West played. Don't be so quick to turn over your cards and start playing more trump. They played a 9. Now the law of restricted choice is if they play a high card and there's no reason for them to do that, that means they probably have few, like 1. Um, if they had 9-2, I don't think they're going to play the 9. So in this case, I believe the 9 signals a singleton. It means we should stop playing the suit because it looks like it's a 4-1 break. It happens one in four times, 28% chance, and I think it's happening here. 
So rather than pulling Trump, we're going to play the Ace of Spades. Now notice if you continued hearts, they're all lose, lose, lose. The Ace of Spades is a fine play. You could play diamonds. We'll come back to that later. So we have five. Dummy has two. It'd be nice if they were three, three. But it's most likely they're four, two. Two-thirds of the time, that's the way it happens. So we play a second spade. We could rough the third spade, but it looks like there's probably four hearts over by east. They played one. We might just as well pitch. In fact, if we were to play a heart, if you looked at it more carefully, you'll see that it's lose, lose, lose. You can go ahead on your own and find out why. But we'll just go ahead and pitch a club. We could actually pitch the Ace of Diamonds because both these diamonds are good. More on that later. So, okay, they're in with the Ten of Spades. They could continue Diamonds, but the Ace is there. Uh, they might as well play a club from Queen Jack three times. Certainly don't want to play that Queen of Spades when they're going to rough it in dummy. So a club it is, a low club. They win with the King, and uh, that means they must have the Ace because South didn't take it. They could play another club, but um, I think they're going to come back in a trump. You know, so they're going to start depleting the trump. They know that partner only had one because South, not likely to have had five, and they've already played one anyway. So Hart comes back to the Jack in South. Okay, South, you need a plan. They've got two trumps left. Um, looks like you've got to play your trump and yet you've got to rough a spade. So I think roughing a spade is what you want to do, don't you? You know that there's only one spade out. They played two rounds, played the third round, and one showed out. So West has still got that queen. So we're going to rough it with a heart and the dummy. And now we can go ahead and play the king of hearts and play these carefully. Real estate, location, 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 bridge, transportation, transportation, transportation. So we're going to play that King of Hearts and overtake it to be able to get that last trump out. So we play the King of Hearts, overtake it with the Ace. We can now play that Queen of Hearts, getting the last trump out. Remember, East had four. The suit split four, 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 one. And now we can go ahead and play the Diamonds and the Spades, right? Almost. If you play the Diamond, you've got the King Queen tight. The Ace must overtake in the Dummy and you're going to lose two clubs. That's not so good. But if you play a spade, will that help? Oh yeah, if you get rid of the ace of diamonds. It feels bad, doesn't it? But you've got to get rid of that ace of diamonds and the dummy. So play your jack of spades. It only hurts for a second to pitch the ace from the dummy. But when you've done, your king of diamonds and your queen of diamonds are both taking tricks. So once again, some of you want to open two clubs in the south hand. Four and a half quick tricks, 21 good working points. I could go for that. I'm doing the one spade. And on the play of the hand, after it went one spade, one no trump, three hearts, should be four hearts. We bid it up to five hearts to make the play more interesting. Okay. So the play was a diamond. We went with the jack and the dummy. We played one round of hearts, and we saw that nine of hearts fall. That was a critical play. The law of restricted choices, if opponent plays a high card, in this situation that's all they had. It wasn't like they had a running sequence from 9, 8, 7, 6. We had all the other intervening cards. So that tipped us off that looked like a 4-1 split that happens one in four times. So we started playing carefully. We went ahead and played a couple rounds of spades, the ace, the king. We could have roughed one, we would have thought, but if we would have done that. It turns out we're going to have transportation with those three remaining hearts in the east hand. So we pitched a club. Could have pitched that ace of diamonds, couldn't we? Wouldn't have had to unblock it later. Um, they then, after winning the spade, they went to a club. They won that one. They've got two tricks. That's all we want to let them have. They came back in a heart. We win it. We rough a spade in the dummy with the eight of hearts. If you roughed earlier, sorry, you don't have enough hearts left, do you? Okay, so we win the Eight of Hearts. Then play the King of Hearts, overtake it with the Ace, the Queen to get their last trump out, the Jack of Spades, unblocking with the Ace. Yes, 
and the last two diamonds to make 11 tricks. Hand number 7A West is again holding a very shapely hand, this time with a 5521 shape and 20 high card points, plus a few more for the great distribution in the minors. Are you tempted to open a strong artificial two club bid here? Well, it might work, but again, this hand has only four quick tricks. Just a bit short, considering both are minor suits, and we expect to be heading for a three no trump contract if partner has a minimum six to ten point responder hand. Opening the higher of two suits, I would recommend beginning with a one diamond bid. While partner East does have four diamonds, the correct response should be one heart, bidding majors up the line, looking for a major suit fit. Incidentally, East's hand barely qualifies for a six point response. A jack third spade side suit often does not pull much weight. However, with the touching heart, king, and queen, the honors are working, so making a response here seems reasonable should partner hold a big hand. And indeed, Wes is hardly waiting to make a game forcing bid with a hand worth about 22 points. But as always, when we have a self sustained suit, it's time to instead think about losing trick count. And here, West Diamond Suit really sparkles. Five long and four honors, four toppers. It's highly unlikely an opponent is going to have five diamond suit. So West's losers are three in the majors and perhaps one in clubs. But back to East, for standard players, bidding three no trump now seems a bit scary with a questionable spade suit. But it's either that or four diamonds since partner's strong jump shift is forcing. Now for our more advanced players with special agreements, bidding the fourth suit at the three level shows a half stopper. So bidding three spades would perfectly describe East's dilemma. And if so, West would then bid three no trump with the queen doubleton since it too is a half stopper. On the likely spade lead, the declarer should be able to make nine trick game contingent upon the club queen being on side for finesse. Now, by the way, if East was lucky enough to hold three cover cards, we would expect slam exploration based upon West strong jump shift indicating four or perhaps a five loser hand on a bad day. On hand 7B, once again, West holds the identical 5 5 2 1 hand with goodies in the minors. However, this time East has a 4 4 3 2 shape. With the two top honors in spades, that's the good news. Unfortunately, the bad news is that East spades are only in a doubleton suit. Bummer. So the bidding again begins one diamond west to one no trump east. Now back to west comes the game forcing three club strong jump shift. But this time with honor concentration in spades and west's apparent honors and length in the minors, east would rather not rebid three no trump lacking a stopper in hearts. So East instead goes for the proverbial plan B by rebidding the cheaper suit three diamonds. Very nice bid East keeping the auction alive, showing minor suit support and passing the buck after hearing partner West's strong jump shift call. Well, that's all West needs to hear rebidding five or maybe even six diamonds contingent upon their enthusiasm and lust to enjoy those slam bonuses. Well, bridge friends, time flies by when we're having fun and we have reached the end of our teaser for our non-members. Thank you for dropping by and I hope you enjoyed taking a peek at our episode number 79 on strong jump shift calls. Of course, like many areas of bridge, there are different strokes for different folks. And a fair number of advanced players instead play jump shift bids as weak, which we will also touch on in part 3B of our lesson. Yet for most everyday bridge players and a fair number of pros still choose to enjoy the benefits of playing jump shifts as strong bids with genuine interest in bidding slam. So the thrust of our lesson is to ensure partners will follow a disciplined approach when making strong jump shift calls. And equally as important, know how to effectively communicate after opener or the responder makes a strong jump shift call. So if you would like to see the entire show pulling you number 79 on strong jump shift bids, please head on over to www.bridgehands.com and join either our premium or ultra membership subscription and tune in for three hours of video where you can also download the printed lesson to share with your bridge friends. 
But wait, there's more. Members can also view hundreds of hours of videos on dozens of topics, including leads, card signaling, doubles, slam bidding, and an in-depth look at finesses and end plays, and much more. So until our next show, thanks for tuning in to our Bridge Hands Pulling You video, and happy trails to you until we meet again. Mm -hmm.